you're looking at geometry, you could probably already predict it from what's over here. But, I mean, today I skipped all of the boring construction. You can learn more about those later. And instead, we're going to be talking about transformation. There's translation strip. Dilation, uh, reflection, and mm, finally we have, uh, oh yeah, rotation. So now, what is this first one? Translation is when you move an object. Seems pretty weird, but I mean, it is what it is. So, what happens when you translate a polygon? Like, for example, A, B, C, D, E, F over here. Mm. Well, let's say we're mapping it over the line F, G. Or let's make it a red instead, my bad. So, now, what does it mean to map it over? Well, to map it over, we're going to use this fancy thing. FG can be symbolized by FG with a little ray over it. And now, what is basically going to happen is we're going to move every single point here one FG away from where it originally was. So let's take the length of FG. So the length of FG is about this much. So now we're going to translate it and we can see that if we translate C, so if we map C to G or if we translate C by the length of FG, we get what we will call C prime. Now let's repeat this process for every other thing. So, boom, boom, and finally, boom. Now, it might look a bit, little messy, but it's going to come together soon enough. So, first of all, we have this. Uh, to make it a bit more clear, I'm going to erase that and make it like this. And then we have E and D connected. Or actually, we're going to call these new points to differ them from the original points. We're going to add a prime to them. So F prime. We translated E to here. So it's E prime. D prime. Optimus prime. No, that's a transformer. So. We have C prime, and then uh, we f then have D, E, okay. It looks like I didn't do the same thing for B, which is my mistake. So this is B prime, A prime, and now we connect B. To C prime, and we're almost done with our shape. It just did A prime should be connected to F prime, and finally we've translated this entire thing. So I'm going to try and erase the, these overlaid lines so that you can more un, uh, better understand or more clearly see what this is. So this is D and bang. So just wait a second and we're gonna erase this. And now boom, we've mapped A, B, C, D, E, F over F, G, where we've translated each point in it by a length of F, G. This uh, essentially means that we're taking the entire shape and moving it over a distance of FG. Hmm, good to know. So, that's what 
translation is. Essentially, taking a shape and moving it. Now, this is also useful in algebra, but we're covering that in our algebra series, so no. Now, next one, stretch. You can probably guess what that means. So this is our pre-image. This is our horizontal, a vertical stretch. And this is our horizontal stretch. It's essentially just increasing the X class Y legs. So vertical, you're increasing the length of the Y leg. Horizontal, you're increasing the le uh, length of the X leg. So now, we've done two of them. Now the third is dilation. What could that be? Well, dilation is essentially making things larger. So for example, let's say we had a triangle over here. So now, uh, we have, so now we have triangle ABC, let's say. Oh, and I forgot to mention it. A, B, C, D, F, and A, E prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, E prime, F prime are both congruent because this is a rigid motion. You're not changing any of the angles, any of the sides, anything like that. But in dilation, you are changing the sides, even though the angles stay the same. So, let's say we have A, B. However, let's say we wanted to make a line twice as long as AB. So we're going to put this here, probably put this B sign somewhere else on the way. And now, huh, what if we did the same thing to AC? Of course, we can't do it to BC because that would extend in another direction. What about AC? Now this is probably going to run straight through C. I'm going to put that there instead. Bang. Bang. And now, finally, I think, just on me, we could be able to project BC onto this last side. I mean, it must be long enough, right? But wait. No? Wait a second. If I remember correctly, we have twice AB and twice AC. That means BC also needs to be twice as long. Okay, it's a bit of a mistake because not Picasso, but boom, there's our dilated triangle. What does this mean? Well, essentially, if we called this AB, this would be Two AB. This is AC. This is two AC. We've essentially taken the triangle and increased it by two. So we basically taken the triangle and grown uh, uh, and growed it or grew it. Sorry. So that is what dilated. Well, obviously this is to BC. If this is BC. So this is not a rigid motion, meaning that let's say we may call the C prime and B prime. A, A, B prime, C prime is not congruent to just A, B, C. So, that's because this is not a rigid motion. All right, what about reflection? Well, reflection has two forms, line reflection and point reflection. Now, point reflection is really simple. Let's say we have ABC over here. A point reflection is essentially equivalent to a 180-degree rotation. Oopsies. No, that's not what I wanted. I'm trying to reach for the rotation sign, but it keeps making it bigger. All right, that's better. So now, this is essentially what a point reflection is. It's essentially rotation 
a 180 degree rotation to be specific. We have one point. Now, what about long reflection? Well, essentially, that's just a mirror image. Like the image you can see of me and the cameras are watching this on um, on the smartboard. Or at least maybe only I can see that because the camera quality isn't too good. But still, let's say that we have our mirror image. So, if we have, say, this, then the mirror image would just be a flipped version of that. So, that's the long reflection, also known as a mirror image. And also, because this is a rigid motion, these two shapes are congruent, and A, B, C, and A prime, B prime, C prime are congruent. Maybe I should just call this C and not get two names to one point. So, that concludes reflection, and now just rotation. Now you can probably guess what rotation is about. If we say rotate a triangle, then we might just do this. So our mirror, our if that was our pre. I am furious at how bad this top screen is. So now we're going to rotate it, and this what what we're going to see in red is our pre-image and now I'm just going to oh it doesn't match up sorry just think of this is our pre-image and think of this as our new image. All right. So now we rotate it, but from what was our axis when rotating it? Of course, it was the center of this triangle or at least the center of the selection I made. If I had done something like this, then it probably would have been rotated differently. So, what if we wanted to rotate around a point? Well, let's say we have A over here and B, C, D, E over here. Now, Let's see what happens if we take B, C, D, E and rotate it around the, uh, around the axis of A. So I'm going to make this selection a circle with the, uh, that has a center of A, at least approximately. And now, I can do this. So, and this gives me a new image. So this is C prime, this is D prime, this is B prime, and that is E prime. All right, so we can see how it was rotated around the single point. So if you're rotating around the point like that, be wary. So that's rotation done. So those are all five of our transformations